Now we're ready to begin our look at regulation of blood pressure. And so this video we're going to start just with an overview of the different things we'll be looking at. And it's going to involve cardiac output, stroke volume, heart rate, blood volume, and peripheral resistance. So if those terms aren't familiar to you or their regulation isn't familiar to you, I would suggest going back and reviewing the videos I've done on those topics because then if you don't, the whole idea of how to regulate blood pressure is going to be lost. So let's first do a little manipulation equation we're familiar with. We've seen this one that flow, blood flow equals change in pressure over resistance. So if I think of cardiac output then as the blood flow for the entire circulation, that is the amount of blood you're pumping out of the heart is the same amount of blood that's coming back to the heart. So that's our overall general blood flow for the entire system. I can also think of blood pressure as the change in pressure for the entire circulation is 120 millimeters of mercury when it leaves the heart in the aorta by the time it comes back to the heart it's practically at zero so that change in pressure is a good measure our blood pressure is a good measure of that change in pressure so if I do a little substitution then into the equation I basically have this for um, the entire system that cardiac output equals blood pressure over resistance and then do a little rearranging I get this that blood pressure equals cardiac output times resistance this equation is another one of those that's really important to have down cold it's not a very difficult one but we need to think in terms of this equation so we can look at how we can affect blood pressure so basically blood pressure is going to be controlled by cardiac output and remember cardiac output is controlled by heart rate and stroke volume and then of course resistance and the biggest factor playing in resistance remember is the radius the diameter of the blood vessel we can also think about blood volume affecting cardi or excuse me affecting blood pressure because remember that cardiac output is dependent on blood volume if we change blood volume or we increase blood volume we increase the amount of blood returning to the heart that increases preload, which increases stroke volume, which increases cardiac output. And then, of course, if I increase cardiac output, then I'd be increasing blood pressure. So that's the time of thinking I want you to get it used to. If this happens, then this, then this, then this, kind of as the example down here. And that's going to help you in being able to determine of how affecting one of these variables ends up affecting blood pressure. So let's look at the overall things then that determine blood pressure. One, as I mentioned, is blood volume again. Now blood volume is going to be determined basically by how much fluid you have coming in versus how much you lose. How much you lose could be passive, things like um, sweating, exhaling, you lose fluids that way. Or it could be regulated through the kidney that is either P more or P less, but I can, the kidney can control those volumes. The other thing that's going to affect blood pressure, as we said, is cardiac output. And cardiac output is affected by heart rate and stroke volume. And then another thing, again, is resistance. So resistance of the system to blood flow. So basically how much friction. That's determined primarily by the diameter of the blood vessels, particularly the arterioles. Remember, they have the highest resistance because they have the biggest drop in pressure. So the diameter, the radius of those arterioles then is going to affect resistance, which is going to affect blood pressure. Another blood vessel diameter we want to think about is going to be the diameter of the veins because that's going to determine the distribution of blood between the arteries and the venous system. Remember the veins have like 60% of our blood in them. So if we constrict the veins, make their diameter smaller, that's going to shove the blood over to the arterial side, thereby increasing the uh, volume um, and thereby increasing blood pressure. Now in the yellow here then is going to be the things we're going to look at that are going to affect blood pressure. So in the next series of, of videos, we'll look at these in more detail. But just to get an overall view of this, we can think of regulating blood pressure in short-term ways or long-term changes. Short-term changes are typically just going to be more of a reflex kind of response to fix the small little changes in blood pressure kind of on a daily basis. 
So things like baroreceptor reflex is a neural reflex that responds to change in pressures and then can restore blood pressure by either affecting heart rate, stroke volume, or the diameter arteries and veins. Then we have a lot of hormones, which I'll go into more detail, that are either vasoconstrictors or vasodilators. And so we can change the diameter of those arteries, and that's going to change resistance, which means we can change blood pressure. Then there's these long-term regulation effects. That is changing blood pressure over a long period of time come into play by changing how the kidney regulates fluid loss. So these hormones here, we'll see how they affect kidney functioning, which means that's going to determine how much fluid you lose, which is affecting blood volume, which is affecting blood pressure. So we'll look at each one of these components. We're going to divide it up into neural types of things, which is basically the baroreceptor reflexes. And then another video lecture will look at all these hormones and their effects on maintaining blood pressure.